FCO, NTDO, 212, Complex. CPS, go. Inco, go. PUS, go. Surgeon, go. Booster, go. Copy that, we have a go from you guys. This is talking sound. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome once again to the Talking Sound Podcast, the only podcast on the internet where negative 10 is a number to be desired. Coming at you live today from the South by Southwest Gear Expo 2016. We've been having such a great time, and as always, there's an amazing amount of technology here for the music industry, everything from booking to virtual reality. And what I'm here for today is actually the South by Southwest Stomp Box exhibit, Put on by the Delhi Magazine out of New York. We have with us actually Paolo, the gentleman who runs the magazine. Tell us a little bit about everything and how the Stomp Box exhibit came to be, Paolo. Hi, everybody. Well, it's kind of a slightly long story, but I'll try to be brief. Um, when I moved to New York City, um, I've always been obsessed with the New York City scene. So I happened to move to New York and I started a magazine uh, that was all about emerging New York City bands. We didn't cover the big artists, we just wanted to focus on the really young emerging bands. And that kind of took off, but you know, magazines are kind of hard. Then we started a blog, and then a few years later I decided to, that I wanted to do a band for the scene, for the musicians in New York. Mm -hmm. And I realized that pedals, guitar pedals, uh, were really crucial to the sound of so many bands. Yep. And so I was like, let's do an event just about guitar pedals. Yeah. And New York is very small, and no, it's not small, it's huge, but the spaces are really small. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can't really do stuff in convention centers. It's too expensive, it's also too big for what I want to do. Sure. So I realized I could do something really compact if I did everything in the headphones. Yep. And that's the idea. I basically started uh, renting a very small room in the Lower East Side. That's where it happened the first year. And then the second year, I did it in a store in New York called Name Drug Music, which is an amazing store in Williamsburg. And that year, it just started really growing amazingly. Yeah. And then a couple of years later, I was like, well, I should do this up, this is up by Southwest. There are so many guitarists there during that festival. Oh, absolutely. And we did it there. Then now we're doing it at NAM. And now we're hopefully expanding to Toronto. Oh, fantastic. And also looking to do it in a few more places. And now I also do the Synth Expo. That's right, that's right. We do also have the Synth Expo over here, which I took part in last year, and it was absolutely amazing. And some of the technology, we've actually got a couple people that we'll be interviewing here in a little while with that. And the fact that you've brought these two worlds together, number one, as an electronic musician, I love and appreciate because, uh, as you know, I'm a pedal modifier myself. I make my own synthesizer circuits. And to see all of this stuff in one place, not just that, but as someone who's worked um, expos, things like that, the fact that it is interactive, the fact that you can actually bring your own guitar, plug in, try out all the new technology from people like TC Electronics, you know, uh, it's just, it's, it's absolutely amazing to me what you have actually set forth and put together here. Now, where do you see the Pedal Expo going? Where do you see this stuff actually ending up? What's, what's your dream for it? Well, you know, that's a tough question. It feels like you reached this peak. Uh, it's been, from 2011 to last year, it was just incredible, the growth. And uh, in these last six months, I had the feeling from many smaller manufacturers that things are getting a little tougher for them. It's too many. There are too many, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, in particular, compared to Sins, you know, there are no, definitely not as many. Although Eurorack is getting to that level as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. The Eurorack market is huge right now. But, uh, you know, honestly, I don't know where I want to take it. I think that we took it already to a pretty good level. Uh, you know, it's not a, a show that can grow much more than this. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what other city we can do it. I'm uh, talking to Chicago Music Exchange. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, CES great is great. There. Yeah, I think it's good when there's a sales component to it. So when we do it in Brooklyn, yeah. manufacturers can sell their pedals. We always have huge discounts. Actually, one important thing, you know, most. Uh, 
uh, expos of musical instruments, they charge you to get in. Absolutely. We do exactly the opposite. We give uh, musicians money to spend. Yep. For example, in Brooklyn, we give everybody, not everybody, but the first 20 or 25 people who buy pedal, $20 voucher. Yep. So we are doing things for musicians. That's always our mission. We support the scene we work in, and well, that's how we approach and, it. And that's just it. Like, I started my pedal mod company the same way. I was an audio engineer for years and saw broke musicians that would love to get a Strymon, but they can't afford $400 for a custom piece of gear. So I started basing my stuff off of Craigslist. You know, basically you could go out and buy a used pedal for 50 bucks, and for that same investment, I'll modify it and give you a boutique and custom sound. Yeah. And the fact that you're actually bringing this stuff to the common person, you're making it accessible to them. So many of these things are so boutique that it's hard to find them in a store to play them. And the fact that you've actually, like I said, made an interactive exhibit where people can come by, try the latest technology, do all of this kind of stuff, it's absolutely phenomenal. So I just want to personally thank you as a modifier, as someone who does this, is in the industry. The fact that you're, you know, like, you reached out to me. I didn't even contact you. You actually searched for local manufacturers, found them, and invited them to come be a part of it. And that, to me, is creating a movement in and of itself. It's creating a community and a nurturing community that just, most of the time, it's it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world in this industry. And the fact that you're actually creating a cooperative community is fantastic. Thank fantastic. you for the kind of words. So, absolutely. Paolo, thank, thank you so you. much for everything. Uh, we're going to hop around now, everybody. Check out some other stuff. Let's hop on over here. Check out Fishman. Uh, they're one of the biggest um, acoustic manufacturers for uh, pickups, things like that. I actually use Fishman pickups in my instruments myself. And let's see if we can't hop up over here, take a look at some of the stuff coming out from Fishman. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how's it Chris, going? Chris, pleasure. We met earlier. What's your name? Let our audience know everything about you. John McLennan. What do you do for Fishman? I work as a product specialist and they bring me out for events and I demo a lot of their awesome products. Now, your new product, I came by earlier and I, my mind was actually blown. I'm an electronic musician. I've tried playing with guitar synths for years and my issue has always been the fact the range of sound. Right. You are like utterly locked down to whatever is provided in that box that they give you with your pickup. Right. And what y'all have come up with is actually visionary and amazing. It's, it's, you can explain it much better than me. Tell us about the triple play wireless guitar troller here. So basically it's a wireless MIDI guitar pickup that mounts onto your guitar and enables you to uh, wirelessly play any MIDI sound you're not stuck to any specific set of sounds like you were saying. You can use it with any third-party apps, but then it also comes with tons of great sounds from uh, you know, native instruments, IK Multimedia, yep. you get contact, you can do sheet music notation, you can use it in your uh, DAW. It's really an amazing tool to be able to create any style of music that you want. Well, and, and myself, I'm a hard gear guy. I love all the soft synth stuff and everything else, all the DAWs, but what I was most impressed with was the fact that you could plug this thing in and control any MIDI. Yeah. Anything that's MIDI controllable, Absolutely. you can plug in and drive with this. So like all of my Emu synths that I have in my rack at home, I could plug the receiver straight into it right. and drive those completely. Now, my big question is, is it polyphonic? Can you actually play chords, oh, yeah. everything else? And it, depending upon the patch, like if you select certain patches that are designed to be like a saxophone, I think the saxophone patch that I was showing you was just one note at a time. You know, so, yeah, well, but you can switch it over within like contact so you can go and edit the sound even if every, every patch I think has a default. Yep. You know what I mean? So, uh, like, you pull up a piano, it's like fully polyphonic, you know? Well, and it's, it, like I said, it's absolutely visionary. It's taking guitar synthesis to a whole new level of control and into a whole new world and panoply of sounds. It's yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Now, and it works, like the tracking, I don't have to change the way I play it. Uh, exactly, and that's just, just it. Like, I pick up the guitar and I'm like, oh, cool, now I'm like a keyboard player that can access and, all these sounds. You know, I, I've bought easily through my time a good two or three guitar synths, and normally ended up like reselling them to friends who were more into it sure. that kind of stuff and had a much more specified use for it yeah. and it seemed like they were always kind of one trick pony yeah. because of that you know there it would be like okay I'm gonna use this thing in like 
two songs tonight yeah and that's it yeah. and only for this one part because that's all the tracking is going to be able to right, do right but man you were over here like playing stevie wonder yeah. through a harmonium right, you know right, stuff like yeah. that and people are like oh yeah someone's playing stevie wonder i'm like yeah that's that guitar over there yeah. they're like what like the tracking on it was absolutely sure. phenomenal now how long did it take y'all to develop this? How long has the product been in development? How long has it been available and where can people find it? So yeah, you can get it at Guitar Center, Sweetwater, uh, places all over the internet. And uh, it's been out, I, I think, it's been out for like two years now, I think. So it's been out for a little bit, but it's like one of those things people see like a box and it's like you have, when you see it like happening, versus just seeing it in a box, you're like, it's like a hammer. I mean, the amount of things that you can do with it is just like almost infinite. Yeah, and I mean, you saw my eyes get good and yeah. big whenever you started playing with it earlier. It's, yeah. like I said, it's phenomenal. The technology behind it is amazing. Uh, what is the website? Where can people go to hear samples, stuff yeah, like that? Fishman.com, there's all kinds of uh, YouTube videos demonstrating all the aspects of the sheet music, like working with the DAW, uh, you know, playing s splits like guys playing different uh, sounds. Oh, wow. Like there's one video that's on the on the homepage that's like, this guy's just, he's playing the bass line one second, and then he's going to like a piano solo and just like going back and forth. Well, and I can't thank you guys enough for looking into the future, seeing that need right. and actually making it happen. <laughs> I'm a Fishman pickup user myself Me and too. where y'all are going, <laughs> well, I can't imagine why. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's but it's it's great. Thank you guys so much for coming, premiering this here, letting sure. the world know about it. Yeah. Everybody, please make sure to stop on by, check things out on the Fishman website, check out all the samples. Once again, thank you so much. I greatly yeah, appreciate it. Us. Enjoy the rest of the expo, man. <laughs> and that's really one of the things that I absolutely love about South by Southwest is the fact that there is it's a whole different world. You know, we now have a week of interactive, a week of film. This has been incorporated in the last few years to be a week of technology music. And speaking of that, last year we actually spoke with the guys from Beat Buddy. Here is Ian. How you doing, my man? Excellent. Fantastic. You guys have added all kinds of new toys to your Beat Buddy. You've even come out with the Beat Buddy Mini. Tell us a little bit about the Beat Buddy the Beat Buddy itself, what came into the creation of it, and what the new products are doing for y'all. Well, uh, the Beat Buddy was made out of necessity. We just wanted one, and we looked everywhere, and it didn't happen, and we went online, we asked all our friends, and we got the same response, which was, I don't know where that exists, but when you find out, I want one. And yeah. so we had to create it, and we created it with uh, all the musicians in mind. You know, we asked them what they wanted, and we created what we wanted. Well, and my favorite thing about it, like I've used drum machines, things like that for years. The Beat Buddy is in a world of its own, man. The fact that it's actually using real drum samples from actual drummers. Absolutely. It's not MIDI driven, there's, there's no patches being put into it but you can load your own patches into it. Yes. That's that's the great thing is if you're an Ableton user like myself, you know, you make your own beats, you can absolutely load those into it and play along with it. Now, that's correct. Uh, uh, oh, well, it uses it does use MIDI, uh, but it's non-quantized. So yes. it's not set to a grid. So it has that natural human feel because it's not computerized it's not exact. yeah it's not it's not it's not synthesized from midi midi it, oh, yes, is what's that, driving the sequence right, of an that, actual drum sample yeah exactly exactly yeah. and and that's just it like I, I went to school for audio and one of the worst things in the world was whenever i actually took a synthesis class and had to start learning to program midi it was like the coldest thing in the world to me you know it was like this is so impersonal there's there's nothing for me to touch nothing for me to interact with necessarily i'm literally making sounds out of nowhere which is kind of cool but i'm a hard gear guy i like playing with real things and the fact that y'all are using actual drum samples is something that's new it's creative it's fantastic Absolutely. what drove y'all to create the beat buddy mini well what drove us to create the Beat Buddy Mini was that when we created the Beat Buddy, we wanted something that really had infinite potential that you could really do anything with. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, they don't need a large chunk of what comes with the Beat Buddy. So the Beat Buddy Mini is that device where you just take it out of the box, it has its presets, you can't program it at all. It has no, With the Beat Buddy, you can load your own content on there, you can yep. create new content. With the Beat Buddy Mini, we have content in, in over 20 genres, but that's it. You take it out and you play with it and it's all the stuff ready for you and 
simple. It's just, it's simple and it's the core functionality of the Beat Buddy without all the bells and whistles. And that's something that's been in demand by a lot of people. Absolutely, absolutely. Man, I can't thank you enough for everything that y'all have done. It's so exciting. And like I said, I met you guys last year. Y'all were right across the hall from us like we were this year. and. I have seen you guys pop up all over the internet in the last year. Like everywhere I look, I see Beat Buddy stuff. So it's absolutely phenomenal to me. I love seeing new technology come out and I love seeing game changing technology. For someone who played alone by himself for years, it's, it's a totally new world for those of us that are solo musicians, stuff like that. So can't thank you enough, Ian. Thank you, that means a lot, thank hey, you. Anytime, man, take care. Make sure to stop by and check them out. Where can they pick it up? What's the price point on the product? Well, the, the we, we're sold wherever pedals are sold. You can find it at mybeatbuddy.com. You can find it online. You can find it at your local dealer. We even have a tool on our website to find a dealer near you. Great. Uh, you can come to the show. The Beat Buddy is 300 and the Beat Buddy Mini is 150. Wow. And the, the pedal that actually helps you control it a little bit better because you can use the Beat Buddy without the pedal, yeah. but there's also a, an additional accoutrement pedal that lets you put in fills and everything else. Uh, so there's a, there's a uh, foot switch attachment that uh, can answer accent hits, pauses, you can scroll through your gig lists hands-free, so that way if you're doing a show, or if you just don't want to bend down, you can you know, go into different folders without ever needing to touch the pedal. The entire experience is hands-free. No matter what you're doing, you do not have to touch it. And that pedal uh, attachment is $50, and we also have a MIDI cable, because the Beat Buddy is MIDI sync enabled, so you can connect to your other devices, and you can control your loopers, make sure all your loopers are perfectly in time to the beat, so all your other effects are perfectly in time to the beat and a lot of other cool MIDI things. Absolutely amazing, man. Once again, it's it's visionary technology and it's great that y'all have invented it, come out with it, and I wish y'all the best in all of the product management with it. Take care, man. Thank you, and if you come by the booth, we have a jam station, you can play with it yourself. There was a great jam going on here earlier. It was fantastically oh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was we great. Had a, we had a full band, including a drummer. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much again, Ian. Take care. Thank you. Have a great rest of the expo. Now. Let's hop on over here. We've got some other people to meet. I forgot my notes, everybody. Let's hop on over here. We actually have uh, the Roly over here. And we have Steve Octave, who's with Roly. Roly is out of the UK. And tell us a little bit about the Roly MIDI controller, all that kind of stuff, and the software that comes with it. Because it's a great controller that uh, lets you have a whole panoply of sounds yeah. in your in your arsenal. It does. Well, here you, here you go. You have the Roly seaboard, seaboard rise here. Um, what we have is five dimensions of touch. Um, you have strike, which is velocity. Yep. You have um, glide, which is bend, and it allows you to use the gliss, the ribbon yep. here. We have slide, which is your vertical y-axis, which can open and close filters. Yep. Um, it can also change sounds. You can, you know, split split the keyboard. Um, we have press, which is like pressure, which okay. allows you to really be expressive. Yep. Instead of having like aftertouch, it actually gives you just full expression. And we have lift, which is like release, which you can also assign um, filters to like delays or reverbs just by the way you uh, release. Oh, wow. Um, we also have the XY pad here. Which is very popular nowadays, very especially popular. with stuff like Korg and everything else. Yeah, so, yeah, and yeah. it really brought back a, a whenever the XYs came out, it brought back a whole joystick oh. world that used to exist <laughs> with synthesizers back yeah, in the day yeah, that yeah. kind of went away and it started to come back. We brought it back. Well, and now the software, how long did it take y'all to actually come up with that and develop it? Because it's pretty advanced. Well, the software, you know, it works hand in hand with the hardware. Um, it's called Equator. Um, it basically, you can really get some great sound design out of, out, out of Equator. Um, I would definitely say it, it probably took about a year and a half. Oh, wow. To, to, to really design that's it. A, and that's really, a short time for a platform yeah, like well, that. You know, Roly. And I came out here and played with it earlier. The sounds inside of it are absolutely phenomenal. And the, the actual expression, I've played with a few of these before, and most of the time, like I was saying previously, they're flat. They're all neoprene. There's not a whole lot of feel to it. Right. The expression that you get off of this is absolutely amazing. amazing. It's a whole world of possibilities. And our sound designer, Raf, he does a really good job, and he's really, like, he used to, I've seen him work. He's in our office every day. Uh, he's just really, really 
in tune with sound and um, he does a great job with, with our sound design. So yeah, shout out to, to Raf. Absolutely. <laughs> and now, where is the product available and what's the price point on this for the average player? Well, for the average player, this goes, this is a Rise 25. This retails at $7.99. It's in all your major music stores, right? Uh, you can find our uh, local retailers online. Okay. And our map. Fantastic. And we have the 49 key. Okay. Oh, wow. 11 dollars package and price. That, and all of that comes with the software, everything else. And not yeah, only that, software. this will actually drive your Ableton, all that kind of stuff yep. as well. Yeah, party so. plugins like Contact, Omnisphere work amazing. Fantastic. And now, the 61-note Grand Stage is also available for your more advanced players yeah. with onboard sounds. That's awesome, guys. And it's technology like this that is really game-changing in yeah. the industry, especially in synthesis. And as an electronic musician, I love it. I love it. The love possibilities it <laughs> are endless. So thank you so much for taking no the time to talk with us. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the South By Expo. Welcome to South By if it's your thank first you year. Much. It's thank super you fun, much. it's great, and it's a it's just an insane experience every Let's time. Don't forget that it's also Bluetooth and it works very nice with noise. We have an app called Noise. So okay. don't forget that you download it, it's free. Oh well Bluetooth. that's fantastic to know. That's Absolutely. great. Anything that's Bluetooth is just cutting edge nowadays. You can exactly. sync it with just about everything. Exactly. And so. With the whole world of app playing and I'm a I'm a big touchpad user and stuff like that so with my with my tablets. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. absolutely great stuff. Something to check out, everybody. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so guys much. so much. Thank Let's you. hop over here and talk with with uh, the nice people from Switched On Electronics. We actually have Reed over here. How have you been, man? I'm good. I'm now, good. you guys are actually a local synth company. Uh, y'all do repairs. Y'all also do a lot right. of customization, and you're That's also right. a dealer. That's right. So we uh, not only do synth but also pro audio. We do a lot of studio repair, anything from repairing microphones to two inch 24 track tape machines, analog tape. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, myself as an analog person, like I, I love all the VSTs and things that are coming out. People laugh at me all the time. I guess it's cause I'm 40. I just, I like physical things. I like knobs, Absolutely. I like buttons, I like flashing lights. Absolutely. I'm a tactical, a tactile musician. Like I, I like to physically move knobs. Now, I can't even buy stuff off eBay because I can't touch it. I'll go to Craigslist because I can meet somebody and I touch exactly the knobs. I know exactly what you mean. I used to mix in the box with, you know, on a, on a doll. Mm -hmm. And so I've got a console, I'm never turning back. You know, analog summing is the way to go. Now you guys actually have some new stuff that y'all have popped out here. Uh, y'all actually do, like I said, y'all do quite a bit of modification here locally Certainly. and customization to circuits. Y'all have apparently gotten into the video glitch market, yeah. which I love. As a video engineer, I mean, I'm huge into the video glitch stuff mm -hmm. and into old school feedback with, with analog video. Yeah, definitely. And that's, to me, one of the sad things about digital video, much like digital music. Uh, there are just some things that you can't do. There are you, some limitations. You can't point your HD camera at an HD TV and start <laughs> generating fractals like right. you used to be able to. <laughs> but tell us a little bit about some of the mods that y'all are doing yeah, to sure. these devices, because like this is a venerable machine here, the old Panasonic yeah, mixer. Yeah, this is a this is an excellent mixer. This has not really been modded uh, very much, and really this does so much you don't really need to mm -hmm. mod it. It's got great built-in effects. But one mod that we did do is on this, the old Atari. Yep. Now these were made in late 70s, early 80s, and we came across a batch of them, and we added all of the top switches and knobs to it uh, as horizontal and vertical multipliers. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you can toggle those, and we also added uh, CV and audio control inputs. Oh, wow, that's so you great. So you can feed in an analog uh, control voltage, or you can feed in, you know, from an LFO or something yeah. like that, or you can feed in a kick drum and, ha and have the have it pulsing. Yeah, the have it actually synced to all the music exactly. and everything else. Exactly. Now, how long does it take y'all to modify something like that? Because I know myself as a pedal modder, it could, mm -hmm. hey, it could be 30 minutes, it could be three, four hours, depending yeah, on the mod and what you're it's doing. It's pretty much a full day because there's so much wiring that goes into yeah. it. I mean, when you open this thing up, it, it's, a, it's a bowl of spaghetti. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's pretty time consuming to do. So Now, where are you guys located here in Austin? I know that y'all actually moved to a new location. Y'all right. were over here on the East north. 11. Yeah. yeah. And y'all yeah. have recently moved over to Cesar Chavez. Tell everybody the location, the website. Sure. And uh, tell us a, approximate cost point on something like your video glitch module sure. over here. Sure, so the store is at 2400 East Cesar Chavez. 
So it's a little past uh, Chacon's, just before Pedernales. We're next door to a, a Blue Owl Brewery. So that's always nice to, you know, yeah, have a just cold step, one at the end of the day. Step next door to your neighbors. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so something like this would run about seven, seven fifty. Okay. Uh, depending on what modifications Utter, we need to. Utterly reasonable, especially considering the fact it's a vintage piece of gear. Absolutely. Good luck finding it to begin with. That's true. And if that's you true. do with the huge market that's out there now for that kind of stuff, you'd be paying a few we hundred. Have, yeah, we have regardless. people who find these uh, online or you know just wherever, and then send them to us, uh, mail them to us or whatever to uh, to have the modifications done. Fantastic, and it, I love it myself. I'm a circuit bender. I love this kind of stuff, and the fact that y'all are bringing it to the public eye, making it readily available to people is fantastic. Because it was it was a hidden technology for years and only a certain few people That's knew right. about it. And That's it's, right. it's really become a big thing now. I see it all over the place yeah. here in town. It's so. a lot of fun. Hey, Reed, thanks for taking a few Absolutely. minutes to talk to us. Let's hop over here real quick and see if we can't get a hold of the guy from Virtual Room. Now, like I said, the stuff that happens here at South by Southwest Gear Expo is absolutely phenomenal. There are all kinds of manufacturers. One of the things that I saw recently whenever I got here today was actually something called the Music Room, uh, which is an amazing, <laughs> amazing piece of technology designed by this nice gentleman right here, uh, who looks like he's packing up as a matter of fact. Uh, we got a little bit of a late start here today because of South by traffic, stuff like that. But Loki Davison is the is not only the manufacturer, but the maker of this amazing stuff. And we have all kinds of B-roll, things like that, that we can show of the product. But uh, tell us a little bit about the music room. So, as the name says, it's a room full of musical instruments. Um, basically, I mostly play acoustic stuff and electric stuff like guitar and bass and double mm -hmm. bass um, and, and drums and I kind of I wanted a way to have cool ways that felt natural and fun to control electronic instruments because sometimes I feel like I, you know, I want some electronic sounds in something I'm playing or something I'm writing yep. but I don't like the idea of just controlling them with a pile of knobs yeah. and I wanted something that felt like an instrument to play Yep. and I want to be able to create weird and interesting instruments you know? and like, I create weird and in interesting instruments. I, I make all kinds of, you know, old school analog synth uh, devices, stuff like that. But your interesting instruments go into a whole nother world, literally, literally. Now, tell yeah. us about the creation of why you wanted to create something that is virtual reality music. So, yeah, but partly we're not constrained by physics. We're not constrained by layout. Like, if you make an instrument, even an electronic one, the way you interact with it is constrained. Yep. Because, well, hey, maybe you can create knobs, maybe you can create sliders, maybe you can create some, like a D-beam or something like that. Yep. But you've got pretty limited control on most of those things. Mm -hmm. um, with our ones, we can have a huge space. We can make our controls. At the moment, we've got our controls be 20 feet by 10 feet. That's how big our control surface yep. is. And we can control, and it's 10 feet high. You know, that's all our control surface. You yeah. can move through all of that and well, do things in it. And that's what's great. Like I, I put on, it operates through Oculus Rift and everything else. Mm. And the, the fact that you actually put on a virtual reality helmet and use controllers and you're in an immersive environment with it is what's absolutely amazing to me. Now, how long did it take you to develop that technology? And what, where are you going with it in the future? So we've been working on it since about the middle of last year, but we've doing, been doing VR stuff for a long time, and before that I was doing music synth stuff for a long okay. time, so we kind of just combined those bits Married of text, so we already had a lot, of, a lot of the kind of ideas behind it. Um, and so we're just going to keep adding more instruments. We've got five instruments in there at the moment. And we're okay. just going to keep adding more. Well, and earlier there was a huge crowd of people up around here watching the demo, people interacting with it, playing with it, and I love seeing that. I love seeing people who aren't even musicians coming up and able to play with something. You know, it's, it, it's great. You really added a whole new level to music and a whole new level to music interaction. Hmm. So some of our instruments are, are designed to be very expressive and are kind of have a high barrier to trying to learn like mm -hmm. we have a, a hybrid between a pedal steel guitar and a theremin oh wow um 
And it's easy to sound kind of terrible on that because it's really expressive. You get to slide yep. around, you get to move up and down. Um, you, you've got a ton of parameter control. Yep. But it's, you know, a bit hard to pick up. We've also got the opposite end, which is uh, this harp. It's an au based on an auto harp. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know the auto yep, harp? Absolutely. So it's based on an auto harp, so you choose a chord and then you strum. Okay. Um, so it's great for songwriting. The way I write songs is usually like, I sit down on my guitar or my bass and I'm like, oh, okay, yep. C and G, C and G, and then write some lyrics around that. It's hard to do that with electronic stuff. It is. The sequences don't usually encourage that. So this instrument lets you do that with synths. Any synth you want, you can connect that up, any sound set, and you can strum at it. That's, that's fantastic. Now, where can people find the music room and samples of it? And what's the price point on something like this? Is it available for sale yet? Oh. And where can people get it? So it's going to go on sale with the different VR hardware. So um, they're all coming out at different points through the year. Okay. Like PlayStation VR is coming out in October. So yeah. we're going to... As each of the platforms launch with um, hand-tracked hardware, we're going to be there launching with them, and we're just going to be adding more and more instruments. So just to begin with, we're going to have the the five instruments, um, but we're going to just keep adding more rooms. Oh, so we've we've scanned a bunch of different venues as well. We scan them visually with photos, but we also uh, record the audio sound of them. So the reverb that for each room is different. Well, and y'all actually go out and ca live capture rooms to create an environment for people to play in. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that, because it's, it's great. Like, I was playing in somebody's custom rehearsal, like their favorite rehearsal room earlier. Yep. And That's the Elvis room. I really like that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. That was the Elvis Costello room, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I did the photos for that one. Oh, so, wow. So, yeah, I took the photos for that. Whereas, um... There's me and another artist, and we do the do the photos together. So well, and, and y'all have done a great job incorporating the two technologies. How long before you have stuff like haptic feedback and everything else that make it even more immersive and even more, I guess, sensitive to playing and, and more interactive? So we've already got haptic feedback on some of the platforms. Okay. Um, we've got that working on the PlayStation VR at the moment, um, the Move controllers. Uh, we only just got the the, the Vive we're using here. Okay. Um, the HTC Vive. We only just got that hardware uh, two days before I left Australia, so um, I haven't tuned the haptics yet for it. That's all right. So it's it's I turned them off for this it's one. It's good to see that you've already got it going though. Yeah, yeah. So I, I turned the, uh, the the haptics off for this version of the hardware because the the hardware is quite different than the previous ones, mm -hmm. so the haptics felt wrong. So I just need to tune that again. Sure. Set the levels correct because you really want it to feel right when you hit hard and when you hit soft yeah absolutely so, it's it's a big difference and you really yeah. got to know what you're doing so yeah. it, the like i said the marriage of the two technologies is absolutely amazing to me the fact that you're actually bringing this to the public evening, is everyone. is great thank you so much for making your way all the way out here from australia to Lovely south to by chat. southwest and keep coming back i can't wait to see what the updates are we'd love to have you on skype stuff like that as you're developing the product and and see see where the world's going with the whole virtual reality realm of music uh, it's it's a great beautiful future we've got so. a lot of things to add and hopefully hopefully people enjoy them and the idea is that it's going to be really cheap as well like that our software and so you can keep adding more instruments on at pretty low cost compared Fantastic. to going out and buying a pedal steel well and that's <laughs> just it that's just it you know it, it kind of marries the whole realm of vst with virtual reality and yeah. the possibilities there are absolutely endless so vsts are great for getting new sounds but they don't give you new ways to control exactly so if you're getting some new vsts and some new ways to control, then that's really expressive. Yep. So. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us, Loki. Pleasure. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Yeah. And that's just one aisle here at the South by Southwest Music Expo. They're actually getting ready to shut down and kick us out of the place, so we need to go. But until next time, everybody, keep tuning in. TalkingSoundShow.com. You can also find us on SoundCloud, Spreaker. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, until next time, everybody. Take care. Keep reaching for 11. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.